Hello, Gary Simon here of designcourse.com. Today, I'm going to review the submissions for the first designcourse.com design challenge, which was for designing a logo, a lettermark logo for a fictional pet company called FitCat. I'm also going to choose the winner. So just remember, if you're one of the people whose logo I reviewed, you know, I was nice in reviewing every one of them. Uh, I didn't put anybody down. But if you disagree with something that I have to say, you know, this is just a very quick review of each logo. So in no means is it an exhaustive list. Maybe I forgot a couple things or I just didn't see something that you meant for me to see or whatever to be conveyed to the logo. So it's no big deal. Don't take it too seriously. All right, so I'm going to switch to the computer to do that review. All right. So let me go down here with the first one. And this is from Bigger Vern. And when I first saw this, initially, I wasn't exactly sure what was going on. Uh, I'd say within the first couple seconds. Uh, but then I realized, you know, if you look at it, the, the F is flipped upside down and to the right. And the same thing with the C. And the point of doing this, as he notes, he said, you know, the F and the C are unfortunately not too apparent. Uh, but he wanted to get the cat ears in here. And so, you know, in terms of relevance, that's definitely, in, in being unique, that's definitely good. I would say also in terms of simplicity, the letter mark in and of itself is also good. Uh, but one area where it does fall short, as he kind of pointed out himself, is just it's a little bit difficult to make out, you know, what is, you know, here. I would say most people would see it and be kind of confused if you, they, you know, uh, if you ask them what exactly is going on here. So uh, I would say it just only falls short just in that one specific category, but in the other ones in terms of being able to scale down uh, and, and being able, in terms of simplicity, it, it definitely is pretty good. So one th note I would make, uh, I definitely wouldn't present both of these together. I would probably not even use that same F and C over here for the actual type. So if you're trying to present these two together, I would just use the same font uh, for all characters. Uh, otherwise, it becomes a little bit too cluttered. All right, so I asked this person to enlarge it so we could see it. And in terms of well designed, in terms of, you know, kind of eye candy, they have the highlights uh, and the shadows. That's definitely good. Uh, the color usage is definitely good as well. It really sticks out. Um, but in terms of what exactly is happening, I was kind of lost. Uh, immediately when I saw it, I thought to myself, because uh, I have two small children, uh, and sometimes they eat those goldfish crackers. I thought that was like a goldfish cracker head being eaten by the F. <laughs> I don't know if exactly that's what's going on or that's what's happening here. I, I just don't see it. Um, so I, I know definitely there's a tail here. Uh, we have the paw print, obviously, which is relevant. Uh, I'm not sure. It, it may take away, though, from uh, simplicity to have all these things here, th like this this band here and this over here. Uh, but yeah, I in, in terms of you know, aesthetics, I like it, but in terms of what exactly is happening, I'm not too sure. I mean, there's an eye here, but yeah, maybe you, Soren, can uh, sort that out for me. <laughs> All right, so over here, this is from a Neo 1212. Uh, they came up with two different concepts, and in terms of simplicity, oh, good, that I, I like it. Um, I'm not too certain if you needed to separate the color of these. Um, these are ears, presumably, uh, and I'm not too certain, just, you know, I guess if you've rotated this, it would kind of look like a cat head, but not so much. I understand they're trying to uh, maintain the C shape. Uh, and then over here, I would say if you just flip this F, because I don't like the F being backwards, it doesn't really make too much sense to me or, or, or why you would do it. Um, just the lines in and of themselves, they make make it feel like a cat, I guess you could say, when term, when it comes to like the tail and the body and such. Uh, but again, I'm not too certain what's happening here. But if you just flip this, I would say this would probably be a little bit better than this one. And also, when it comes to the uh, colors, two colors clashing, 
uh, I'm a big fan of trying to separate those and not just have two colors c colliding like this. It kind of takes away from the simplicity, really, and adds to uh, complexity and sometimes clutter. So I would uh, either make them the same color or add like a, a stroke on the C that uh, kind of overlaps it so that it creates some negative space separation between these. All right, so then over here, I uh, this person Tunzer or Tonzer, he basically resubmitted this. Um, I would say in and of itself, whenever it comes to presenting a logo, it doesn't hurt to sometimes include one with a different gradient or a background or whatever. But always, I would say present it on a white background and do and offer other views of it um, secondary uh, to it. Uh, but anyhow, when it comes to this logo, I you could definitely see a cat in here, uh, but in terms of complexity, uh, if you were to scale this down, so if I copy this and I bring it into Photoshop and I paste this in and I hit Control T and I scale it down quite a bit with the colors, you can't really see it too well. It's not, and also with all the fine details and the lines and, and such, you can't see it as well either. Let me switch back here. Uh, for the cat, of course, I would make that like a black or a blue or a dark blue. Something that stands out a lot more. Um, but yeah, in terms of the FNC, it's just a little bit cluttered here in this variation. We'll get down to his, his other variation, which is an improvement in my opinion. Uh, but I'm going to move on. All right, so this is from Su Huangbo. <laughs> I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. Um, this logo, I mean, it is simple, although it gets a little bit cluttered with the legs and stuff down here. So if that were scaled down, that could possibly be an issue. Uh, obviously, you, you do get it right away, which this is a plus that it has over some of the other previous logos in that you could see the C is a tail of a cat, and that's pretty identifiable. But one issue here I see is... I. Uh, the type that's used for the word mark is a block bold font, but up here it's a rounded font. I would rather see a rounded font and keeping it consistent with the uh, the smooth rounded nature of this font. Other otherwise, you get kind of like a cluttered feeling and it's not consistent. So I would definitely change that. Uh, so again, in terms of complexity, it's pretty simple. I would also say that. The proportions of how the F is, the FC letter mark is displayed with the fit cat, that could probably be adjusted. It kind of feels like everything's just kind of separated, if you will. It doesn't feel feel like one single mark. Although he, he I guess you could try to remedy that by encasing it in a in an oval or, or an emblem, but in and of itself, it kind of feels like either the fit cat needs to be larger or this needs to be smaller and maybe placed in a different area. Alright, so also, it doesn't doesn't hurt to include, you know, a real world usage as well. All right, so Bigger Vern, this is a second one that he submitted, and right off the bat, I, I would say that this is definitely in terms of being unique and relevant. You know, this scores high marks. Uh, in terms of being able to be used, I would say as a separate symbol, and then also having the fit cat over here. I uh, I would say it would be best to take this idea and then just use it in the name itself and the letter mark itself. Uh, but in terms of thinking outside the box, you know, using the, the, the traditional type of cat, I don't even know what you call this toy, like a scratch board or whatever, to, to make it with a C. It's definitely unique. I like the idea. The, the T over here, that's a little bit difficult because it, it could kind of look like a Y. Uh, but yeah, that's no big deal. Um, then we have Quell Christ over here, and I had a hard time kind of finding, kind of seeing what was going on exactly with this, but I see that there's a, uh, an F right here, and then a C right here, and this could be construed as being a cattail, um, but when it comes over like this and, and bounces up, I, I'm not too sure, I think that's the part that kind of clutters it for me, uh, and so obviously this is a very abstract sort of thing, but I'm not sure how effective it would be. And, and it may make P 
people kind of confused about exactly what's going on with the uh, the actual letter mark. Um, and in terms of mixing the colors here, I don't know. I think it would probably be best to keep it all one or all one color. And also provide a different variation, which never hurts. And then Tunzer, this is the second one. And this is definitely an improvement from the first one he submitted up here. As you can see, uh, this uses the negative space well with the C, which is a unique idea. Uh, you can see that it's like a cute, unique type of cat. And what's also cool is that, you know, even though it's like for a fit cat company, it's like a pudgy looking cute little thing, but it looks willing to, <laughs> this is what I'm just gauging from it, uh, willing to play, I guess. It looks eager, just the the eyes and such. Um, the the fit cat, I would probably move the, the fit in the cat over here a little bit more, but I would say that uh, this here is pretty good. And we come down here to PsyOps, and basically, I. Uh, I think you can see what's going on. There's an F right here. The F also serves as cat ears. And then the C right here also serves as a tail kind of going over. And and then you flipped it to kind of make like a single unique icon. And so, you know, when scaled down, this would work well. Uh, I mean, it's not 100% very immediate and to know to see the f and the c and to know what's going on it takes a little bit of time to understand it uh but still it's unique and it would scale down well so those are pluses all right and then we have corbin jsm and uh right here nothing's too specific to the actual cat everybody everybody's been focusing on a cat and no not so much the fitness aspect so thinking outside of the box in this this way is a good idea um, when it comes to joining of the the colors here, like I said, I, I don't, I'm not a fan of it. Uh, I think it can just kind of create clutter, but uh, he did create that sort of openness between the barbell and the C. Uh, but I would say uh, not necessarily do the same thing, but do it on a lesser level between right here, right here, and right here, and here. That way the colors don't clash so much or keep them the same color. Uh, so yeah, in terms of it scaling down, that would work well. So not a bad logo. And I also had one email submission, which I specified you can do so if you wish. And uh, I didn't get their username, but I got their first name. Uh, and this is what they sent me. And so seeing this immediately, I thought, well, the C is coming before the F. So I'm not kind of a fan of that. Uh, also, when it comes to the ears uh, and, and it being a cat, they're flipped to the side. And so it's not 100% identifiable of what's going on immediately, at least. I like the type. It's simple. And the colors there are, are good as well. Uh, but usually you want your logo to always, be, to, to always work in a grayscale. So uh, if it was black and white... You would definitely have to create separation right here, or in terms of white space. I'm gonna go down, and then I uh, from Khaled Harris. Now these guys submitted in a different thread, so I just pushed them over here to the same thread. And I, uh, in terms of I uh, the, the, I mean I could see the cat obviously. I uh, I would definitely change the uh, orange here just to the same color, uh, and. We could see the tail, although it looks kind of like a rat tail, so I would address that. Uh, in terms of the font, you know, I like that it's, you know, playing to the cute, cuddly nature of, of a cat, I guess you could say. Uh, I'm going to move on down here. And then from, I don't know how to pronounce his, his Ixis or something. He could tell me maybe after this. Um, and then we have just a simple logo. This is, this would be more of a, of a word mark, not so much a letter mark, um, because we're supposed to focus on F and C as being a separate symbol. Uh, but you can see immediately what's happening here. Uh, and then to, to also add a, uh, a paw here, unnecessarily, I would say, clutters the logo in terms of what you're trying to point out. We could already see it's a cat here, so you don't necessarily have to add this over here. So remember, trying to be simple as possible uh, and memorable as possible. Uh, so, 
yeah, that's just a quick review of all the logos. Uh, and so based on all of these submissions, uh, a lot of them were really close in terms of quality. And I think ultimately what I would feel personally would be best in terms of, you know, comparing all of these against each other would be Tunzer's second submission of F and C. Just in terms of, you know, simple colors, simple lines. Yeah, I, we're just using the negative space here in the C to create uh, an image of a cat that is immediately identifiable. It's not confusing at all. It's cute, you know, whatever. Uh, so I'm choosing Tunzer for this uh, week's design challenge winner. So I'm going to go ahead and switch back to the video. Okay, so I just wanted to thank everybody for submitting entries. I didn't know if it would be uh, a good contest or not, but fortunately we got a decent number in our early stages. So in a few days, I'm going to announce the second design challenge. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. You can offer up suggestions if you want. All right, I'm Gary Simon at designcourse.com. Subscribe here at YouTube if you haven't yet. All right, goodbye.